I'm bad at coding. When I started college, I almost got a C in my intro CS class. I had to drop one of my core computer science classes because I would have failed it the first time. When I started lead coding, I couldn't even reverse a linked list. But despite this, I ended up completing six internships in college at companies including IBM, Amazon, and Microsoft, worked at Google as a new grad, and I'm now a senior software engineer. So how did I do this? How did I go from someone who literally could not code her way out of a cardboard box to someone who ended up with many job opportunities and is doing fine in her career? My name is Maddie, and in this video, I'm gonna share exactly what changed things for me. And no, it's not just practice more leak code. Let me be really clear about something. I'm not sharing this to brag. I'm sharing this because I know exactly how it feels to sit in your CS class completely lost while it seems like everyone around you just gets it. In my classes, I was surrounded by many classmates who had been coding since they were 10 while I was very much new to the field and wrote my first line of code less than a year before I decided to be a computer science major. I want to give some background into myself and my computer science journey. In high school, I never thought I'd be a software engineer and study computer science. I loved biology and did many competitions in that field in high school and took AP computer science just because I wanted to take as many AP classes as I could. I back then had no inherent interest in the field. When I got to college though, all my friends were taking math and computer science classes and declaring one of those or both for their major. I started off wanting to be a biologist, but after some research internship and realizing that I'd 100% have to go to grad school to get a job I'd be happy with, I decided that perhaps a career in medicine or biology just wasn't for me, and I found myself drawn back toward computer science. That very first intro computer science class I took, intro to CECS, almost convinced me to change majors because of how badly it went. But luckily for me, I realized that even though the class was so difficult, the part that I struggled in the most wasn't actually the CS part, it was the EE part. I decided to give computer science another try and eventually found out that I actually liked building programs and software and debugging. And this brings me to my first point, don't be afraid to fail. I know it sounds cliche, but it's so fundamental, especially in computer science. I can't tell you how many times I felt completely clueless, like I was banging my head against a wall, convinced I never understand pointers, or recursion, or whatever concept was currently torturing me. But here's the thing, that feeling is normal. Everyone experiences it, and no one is born knowing how to code. We all have to start somewhere. Coding is about problem solving, and problem solving inherently involves trying things that don't work. You'll write code with bugs. You'll design systems that crash. You'll break prod, maybe, hopefully not. This is fine. You'll have projects that don't turn out how you envisioned, you'll get rejected from hundreds of different companies. And that's totally fine. The key is to not let those failures define you, but rather see them as learning opportunities. One of my biggest mistakes early on was letting the fear of failure paralyze me when it came to internship searching. I didn't submit applications just because I was afraid of getting rejected, which in hindsight is so silly. I realized how many more opportunities I auto-rejected myself from by simply not applying. Later on, when I started applying to lots more companies, I got more rejections, but also more offers and choices. Think about it this way. Every bug you fix makes you a better debugger. Every failed project teaches you something about design or implementation. What's more important than the exact grade you got for a particular assignment is rather if you actually learn something, which brings me to my second point, finding your learning style and the right resources for you. Everyone learns differently and what works for your study buddy might not work for you, and that's perfectly okay. The important thing is to figure out how you best absorb and retain information. For example, are you a visual learner? Learner. Do you learn best by seeing diagrams, charts, and videos? If so, focus on YouTube video tutorials, interactive visualizations, and maybe even drawing out concepts physically on paper yourself. There are tons of great YouTube channels and online platforms that use visuals to explain complex topics. Or maybe you're an auditory learner. Do you prefer listening to explanations, podcasts, audio courses, or even just having study groups where you discuss concepts out loud? These might be more effective for you. And then there are kinesthetic learners who learn by doing. If that's you, you need to get your hands dirty with a lot of practice problems, coding challenges, and building projects. Personally, I'm a bit of a mix, but I definitely rely on visualizations to help me understand complex systems, and I'm very kinesthetic. I learn best by actually building and experimenting with code. Sure, I can watch a video or read a textbook, but it doesn't actually click with me until I start coding it myself and debugging. Something that's made a huge difference in my journey was learning how to break problems down visually and developing an intuition for computer logic. And that's exactly what this video sponsor, Brilliant, can help you do. Brilliant is a great way to learn computer science and other topics interactively. Their hands-on approach and intuitive visualizations help me actually understand what is going on underneath the hood instead of just memorizing syntax. I've used Brilliant to supplement what I learned in class and even in industry. Brilliant has thousands of bite-sized lessons in Python, algorithms, data structures, AI, and you can work through all of them at your own pace 
which is perfect for busy students or industry professionals. There are new lessons added monthly. Whether you're prepping for your next interview, trying to level up as an engineer, or like I was, just trying to build up the skills to be a better programmer and more logical coder, Brilliant makes learning feel doable and even fun. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash maddiezang, scan their QR code on the screen, or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now let's talk about an important resource that students honestly don't use enough, TA sessions and office hours. I know it's what every professor tells you on the first day, but seriously, I used to be so intimidated to ask for help. When I forced myself to go to office hours, it made a world of difference. One strategy that saved me countless headaches was going to the TAs at the beginning of a project. When you go early, you get their undivided attention. They can clarify any ambiguity and you're less likely to develop bad habits that you'll have to correct later. Using TA sessions and office hours effectively is also a great way to explore different facets of computer science. By talking to the TAs and professors and learning more about their experiences and other classes or labs they might know about or teach, you expose yourself to potential research opportunities or upper level classes that you might not have considered. This exploration can completely transform your college and job search experience, which brings me to my next point, finding what you're passionate about. Finding your passion is of course more easily said than done. I myself got lucky. After I took the Bayesian modeling and inference class in my computer science department, I liked it so much that I ended up being course staff the next semester and then discovered and got a research position exploring Bayesian modeling for pulmonary disease diagnosis. Finding an undergraduate research opportunity can seem daunting, but it's incredibly rewarding. If you don't know where to start, first reach out to professors that are actively seeking student researchers. Look at your uni's website sites for faculty profiles and their research areas. See if any of those align with your own interests. Once you figure out what you're interested in, reach out to professors whose work excites you even if they don't explicitly advertise openings. They might have ongoing or upcoming projects. Be prepared to share your resume or a brief description of your skills and interests when contacting potential research mentors. Emphasize your willingness to learn and contribute as enthusiasm and a strong work ethic are often valued over extensive prior experience, especially when it comes to undergraduate research, where professors would not expect their students to already come in with years of experience in the field. Networking with grad students can also be helpful. They often know about available positions or professors who are looking for assistance. Remember that persistence is absolutely the key. It might take reaching out to multiple people before you find the right fit. Even though finding a research position might take some effort, I promise it's worth it. Not only will it help you explore what subtopics in computer science you might be interested in, honestly, doing undergraduate research was one of the best things I did for my career. It really filled out my resume back when I didn't have any industry experience, gave me something concrete to talk about in my interviews, and helped me land my first internship. So that's my story and my advice. I really hope this video has been helpful and that you're leaving here feeling a bit more encouraged. If I can go from almost failing my intro computer science class to working at Google, then I truly believe you can achieve your goals as well. Thank you so much for watching, and please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more software engineering resources and career tips. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.